Yes, it's good, but I think we cannot focus on slides. Uh, just show marks and link. No, no, you, you can. Yeah, you can focus on marks. I will make the focus. Ah, okay, great. Okay. I mean, well, I, I'm do well. You think is the best? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you okay, can so survive it. What, what computer can we connect? Uh,
Hello, thank you for coming tonight. And we are going to start the session in ten mi in two minutes. Welcome to the second event held by HQ Blockchain Club. We are a student-run organization dedicated to the promotion of blockchain technology among HQ community. You can reach us through our official email or inboxing our Facebook page. You can also join our online community groups through scanning the QR codes. The first one is the Telegram group and the second one is the WeChat group. We will, we will, in the future, we will post information like blockchain study materials 
um, blockchain related internships or competitions and our future events updates in this two group. You can also find other blockchain lovers in a group and to do the to study blockchain with you or to do a pro blockchain project with you in the future. Today we're very glad to have Mr. Maxim Balashevich with us tonight and uh, Mr. Maxim Balashevich is the CEO and founder of Sentiment. He's also a veteran uh, entrepreneur with over 15 years of experience in leading international teams and over 10 years of experience in financial market analysis. Today, he will uh, give us introduction of crypto assets and an overview of crypto asset market circles and also um, teach us some techniques of, about um, crypto assets valuation. So now, without further delay, please join me to give a warm welcome to our speaker tonight. So one uh, notice uh, event today will be filmed. So same cool questions you're asking. <laughs> and the first question is from my side. How many of you are familiar with uh, um, cryptocurrencies? And how many think that blockchain is different from cryptocurrencies? Yeah. How many of how many of you think, uh, how many of you have some cryptocurrencies, like bought or still hold? Uh, how many are considering to buy some cryptocurrencies? Okay. How many want to understand how cryptocurrencies, why they suddenly exist, what is the purpose for them to exist, will they, oh, this is a good enough. Okay, good. <laughs> There are many things which can be uh, uh, said about cryptocurrency, or blockchain as technology behind. And of course, like half an hour, it's very limited time. So we will, uh, on one side, try to go very deep. On the other side, uh, take only a small piece of information which is available at the moment. So, you know, like a very strong focus on something. So we try to go deep. But keep in mind that what we'll discuss today is just really like scratching the surface. There are many more things to be discovered and maybe the major outcome if we, if we are talking about outcomes, it's uh, like raise interest and see in which direction it's maybe for you the most interesting to look further. Because I personally believe that the currency is here to stay, There's nothing to remove them. And they will eventually over some time will represent more and more part of our economic development, the way how we interact with each other, how we build products of value together. So it's very good to understand what is behind it. A few words about sentiment. Well, it's like we are trying to do um, in one place, 360 degree overview of the whole crypto market, cryptocurrency market. All the information, whatever you need, our aim you can find in our place. And it should allow you to see what's going on now, what has been happening before, and maybe for you to understand, okay, I need to now analyze this and this part to maybe understand what's going to happen in the future, if you're about predicting, or if you're interested in some specific part of crypto uh, activities, you just go inside and say, okay, what is happening there now on many different layers. And as I said, the uh, uh, key takeaways which I would like us to achieve 
when we are finished talks and questions and answers, that we are clear what cryptocurrencies are, why are they actually not cryptocurrencies, or not only cryptocurrencies? We introduced and bring some examples of what the typical cycles of development in crypto space are, and why is it so important. And uh, I will uh, explain, and I want you to understand which are the key uh, uh, pieces of data which one has to take into account when he tries to understand what is uh, happening in crypto space. And as a last point, it actually is a side effect as a result. Once you know what are the cycles, what is the data is important, you will understand how to analyze it, how to make your brain power very focused and see what is important and ignore just the rest. Because there is a lot of noise in crypto space. And it's good when you ignore the rest, you will be able to achieve fast initial fields of time. Okay, maybe I will stay for a few minutes. Yeah? Because I, I, I had to look uh, on both sides. Mm, this is a very uh, like simple example from, from existing establishing financial system. Like two simple charts, one is S&P 500, another is NASDAQ around year 2000.com. And you will see that they are uh, correlated very strongly. It's just that uh, NASDAQ was more volatile, it was new at the time, the emergence of internet and excitement of the whole world entrepreneurship technology, what can be done. But basically, they move more or less together. And if we take what happens thereafter, and we compare S&P, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, Nikkei, I think I took here even English stock markets, you will see they're very much correlated to each other. There are cycles. The more, more or less move together up and down, up and down. There is a whole economic cycle for established economy as it is now. Now, compared to this chart, uh, the colorful lines is uh, uh, price for Bitcoin against the uh, dollar. And on the top, you see what we saw before. Now, when you compare both of them, there is something, I think, which is immediately makes you wonder what's going on. Compared to price changes for Bitcoin, it looks like nothing happened in an in in established economy. There are some kind of vibrations there, but they're not visible when you compare to crypto space. And there are some reasons why. And we'll try to understand these reasons. And the main thing, when you see just this chart, <coughs> But the crypto assets are different, and they have their own cycle. They have still the cycles, but the cycles are kind of different. They move faster, and the cycles are tighter, and more volatile or unpredictable. And uh, there is now a kind of deep explanation, but uh, I, sometimes my team says I shouldn't touch to this point in presentation. Uh, but I keep coming because, in my opinion, it's the most important thing to understand uh, what's happening in the crypto space, uh, even though it's not straightforward or like uh, uh, mostly intuitively you can understand. This is 200 years of history for commodities or for physical commodities, mm -hmm. like uh, gold, copper, wood, whatever. Whatever was uh, uh, important for our real economy a long time ago. Over the time. Now it has cycles, again, everything developed in cycles. And uh, it represents uh, the development, uh, 250 years development of physical economy as we know it now production of cars, smartphones, satellites, building the uh, construction, everything which has very solid physical uh, fundamentals. before we jump there. Now, what we've entered, and it's kind of happened uh, not uh, from one day to another, it's been like happening over the last 20 years, it's a rapid development of virtual economy, or digital economy, where things are happening much faster. It doesn't take much time to say a word. It doesn't take much time to create 
sudden small application which become viral and has great value. It takes much shorter time now to create something which other people believe to be valuable or important and they share with each other because things in virtual economy tra travel in much, much, much faster. You don't need to mine uh, some stones. You don't need to build long time and project things. You are just getting small teams together. You have an idea, you implement it, and if it's good, and it's the right time, it gets very, very fast, and it gets very, very fast. And this is exactly where crypto assets are coming. It's a, as I say, crypto is very new, so the chart is by no means uh, as deep and as representative as it will be maybe in five years and then no more. But we know already how crypto assets uh, function in to some degree that we can identify the cycles and we can already assign what was the meaning of every specific cycle. And we have till now two cycles. I don't know how many of you are aware, maybe uh, uh, you think that uh, the cycles are uh, in the crypto not so obvious, but for once you are engaged into it, you see very uh, obvious, like the cycle number one, it was uh, um, developed since the establishment when Satoshi Nakamoto published his paper, Bitcoin was mounting, this was, even short time before there was already experiments. And now at some specific point of time, those uh, pioneers who were involved, they believed, yeah, not only it's working, not only they believe it's working, they see it working, they push it, and they implement it on a level that people start exchanging digital, crypto money between each other, it was stable. So, and, uh, and once they saw it's working, and it's independent from the current system, it like get viral and hype, and we had the first uh, uh, hype, uh, Cycle 2013 and 2013, maybe 200, I don't know, 1,000, and uh, maybe uh, not many of you have heard. This is the first time when at least notice there is something going on. Yeah, I didn't participate in the first cycle, uh, but I heard about. It. And uh, in a, as in the very cycle, it's uh, uh, most people notice the top, but the cycle takes a little bit longer because when everyone is high, it becomes not so not so rational and many crazy things happening. There is always some cleaning process thereafter. In that process, uh, we did have uh, uh, Bitcoin working, and there have been like few hundred clones of forks of Bitcoin, which were basically doing the same stuff, but uh, just people try to make uh, themselves uh, rich and fast. It didn't work out, surprise. <laughs> but there was some cleaning process needed. It took quite a few years, and of course, uh, there was a uh, mud box uh, uh, hack. And many things happened. So the price slowed down, and uh, most people forget about it. And then, at the close to the end of the uh, first cleaning cycle, Ethereum appeared, was an ICO, and they uh, introduced a new version of uh, cryptocurrencies where it's not only exchanging uh, <coughs> very fast and without middle and direct peer-to-peer -peer value of money. It's, on, it's also where it became possible in a simple, relatively simple way so that anyone could write a program, attach something to it, some conditions or some complicated rules. And this way it became possible. And the most interesting uh, that the once the market realized that there is a next cycle coming in, we've seen I don't know, a few hundred, few, more than a few hundred ICOs coming on top of it, and we like see it just recently added 2017, we had the peak, high peak of the second cycle, where <clears throat> the whole market or community realized, yeah, it's possible not only exchange value, but to make it in a much more complicated way. Now we can work together, establish rules, how we uh, distribute the money we collect in ICO. Everything is transparent and uh, it's, it is working. And there was a lot of hype. And the thing, here it's interesting that, um, and you will see it on the next chart, it looks different on one side, every cycle. But there is something which is happening over and over again in every cycle which makes it look the same. And as a researcher who wants to understand uh, crypto assets, I would say that understanding the cycles is the first thing we need to pay attention to. 
because things get messy on both sides, on the top and on the bottom too. On the top, we get mostly overexcited, overhyped, many uh, strange people come into place, into the game, trying to squeeze the value and run away with it. In the bottom, there are a lot of uh, hidden conflicts coming onto the surface, so that we believe that our oh, crypto is not working, or it's uh, a lot of scams, and maybe sometimes governments have to uh, prohibit or punish it. So it's a kind of extremes. And in order for us as researchers to stay in a clear objective mind, we should kind of not ignore, but know that it will happen anyway. Uh, what we think, we try to identify okay, what is the reason for the cycle, what is the next coming, and where can I apply my abilities to be in game into the next cycle. So the first one was only establishing fear to pay way of exchange value. Second one, where you can uh, attach more complicated things to it. And it, uh, as you see, only at the top, only 35% of the top, total market relation belonged to Bitcoin, where at the beginning of, or at the end of the first cycle was 95%. So Bitcoin is still kind of very important, but it like distributes the value across many projects. And now we're still playing across the Brazil right now. It's still maybe not finished, but there are many interesting things uh, or discoveries happening right now. Now, as we started with physical commodities, now we move to this uh, digital virtual world. This uh, second thing uh, behind cycles, I would like to say that we should treat crypto assets not only as a currency. Yes, they can be paid for payments, or they can be used for payments. It's very obvious usage. <coughs> but uh, every single cryptocurrency has typically some other utility. Bitcoin is considered to be now a store of value of digital gold. In Ethereum, you will see that it's used for paying, for uh, using resources. In EOS, it's even more complicated. You stake EOS and you get access to Zipu, to RAM. It's a really like, complicated system where it's not only for transaction value, it's uh, to let you use resources of this network to have access to part of the profit of the network and to share the value or in some networks you can use it for making government decisions the community based on the amount of tokens how they deploy it they can make a uh, change the rules how the network works so it's far beyond just payment it's a, a modern digital commodity which has uh, a lot of usage and can you you can imagine there's such a new field which uh, has been created in a very short time. It's very difficult for human mind. How do I deal with uh, valuation? And what value does it have? It didn't, it didn't exist never in human history. It's very challenging for us. Here, you now, something based on the real data, uh, which we've been able to uh, collect over the last years. One example we will look into is Bitcoin. And we'll take only uh, one part of the data, which is on-chain data. And directly taken data directly from Bitcoin transactions. How often can happen, how big the transaction is, from which to which address. The things we can already analyze now. Um, of interest is uh, two things here. This small circles at the bottoms. And uh, a kind of fall in line because you will see very similar behavior on the next chart for Ethereum. It will come to it later. Now, first, what is at all on the screen? <laughs> because so many lines. What is on the screen? One is a price. Whenever you analyze crypto, if even it's digital commodity, price is a very important. It does reflect so many things that you never ignore it. So the price is a green line. Like you hear in the beginning, you hardly see any changes, but there have been changes. What is a yellow line? It's so called realized value. It's a total acquisition price, which all token holders in every specific period of time, every day, paid to obtain this amount of tokens which exist on the network. And not only this, 
this yellow line is actually a relationship between market value, like market uh, capitalization of the network in Bitcoin, to this realized value. So that we have some simple number. And you see it uh, fluctuates here between on top nine, but typically between slightly below one and six. So what does it mean? There is a price for the Bitcoin network, which is paid by people who buy Bitcoin or sell, and it's like changing over the time, and it has been changing at the beginning it was even less than dollar to twenty thousand dollars not falling down. But there is one parameter which is not visible on, on the price chart, which is how much people actually pay to obtain these tokens. And you can calculate this number if you do some specific mathematics, and if our team did, and some other team as well too. And once you have ratio between what market values everyone sees, what actually people pay to obtain these tokens, then you can already a little bit see deeper. For instance, these circles, it's a moment when this ratio falls below one. So market thinks the price is, let's say, 100 million, but in reality, all the token holders pay 120 million. So obviously, quite obviously, it's undervalued. So people pay more than what is the current value. And from the past, we've seen it cannot last forever if the network is still alive. There will be time in a, in a circle development when it will start pushing up just because something new coming, be it Lightning Network or some new forks out of Bitcoin, or whatever the new innovation will be coming. And then there will be coming new cycles and the people start speculating how it has to increase its value. So first thing we know now, as long as this ratio of market value to realized value falling below one, it seems to be the network becomes undervalued. And the thing, the second, the falling down line is uh, how much can be, because when uh, undervalued below one, but okay, when it's going up, it's obviously becoming a kind of overvalued. How far, how far can it go? And we see that with every uh, development cycle of uh, network itself, it becomes lower and lower and lower. Maybe because much more network participants who have incentives to realize their profit, so if even they have, depending when they bought, 5, 10, 50 time profit, they will sell it anyway. And the more people you have, the more smooth it becomes project. And it's not so simple to believe, to make so many people around believe it has much more to grow. The more nature, or the, the more major networks uh, becomes, the list of volatilities. What we don't know from this chart, the next cycle, when it's coming. Because as you see, we're again in a, in a territory where fall below one. So it's kind of based on the history we consider to be Bitcoin now undervalued. So when it go up, how far can it go? This one we don't know. Or I would say you shouldn't pay attention uh, uh, to this ratio when you try to charge uh, how far can it go, but it's a kind of valuable to see, okay, well, that's what might be undervalued. The same price or the same uh, chart now for Ethereum. And you will see first thing, Ethereum had only two cycles, where Bitcoin has three cycles, yes. Bitcoin exists for 10 years, almost 10 years, nine years, something. Ethereum exists for much less, it's a kind of around almost four years. And even though the cycles are faster, you need some time. Two years up, two years down. Okay. Yeah. Green, green is a price for Bitcoin. Price for Bitcoin. And the yellow is a ratio between total uh, Bitcoin uh, valuation for the whole network, what is the uh, total market valuation of Bitcoin? Like for instance, yes, let me show.
So the yellow line will be, uh, the green line is like this, it's uh, how much is the total uh, Bitcoin valuation. The top it was 320 billion, right now it's around, I think, 60, yeah. around 60, 70. So this represents um, this green line. How, how much a market is uh, thinking it's uh, worth. And the yellow line is the relationship between uh, this market uh, evaluation and how much people paid for all tokens in circulation. Because we take on every day uh, token that has been moved to a specific address. We take the price on this day for this, uh, uh, for this amount of token and we kind of sum up for the whole history. And, uh, Total acquisition cost. It's like maybe like uh, if you uh, pay for iPhone uh, 1000, how much is it really for Apple to buy all the components? Maybe 300? I don't know how much. Maybe 200. So basically, you pay five times more than the price which they paid for it. So this is a simpler relationship. Now for Ethereum, um, it has the same, uh, it's, it's, uh, the same behavior. Just we have uh, just we had the two cycles, and uh, behavior you will see that as soon as it goes below one, it stays there for some time, but then it uh, jumps up and goes. In the Ethereum case, not so good quality, but I think it was also around uh, five or six. Uh, this ratio uh, market relation to acquisition cost, and we had there uh, only two cycles. And by the way, in both Ethereum and Bitcoin, they are staying below one for around around three months. Basically. I will not spend so much uh, time just on this two charts. Maybe you will have uh, uh, some questions and we can interactively uh, look into a lot of different data. Because we have maybe 50 more charts. <laughs> and uh, just for, uh, 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 as, as a summary, here we, uh, on this chart, we analyzed or like we showed only this on-chain data. You can take data directly from blockchain. Uh, Actually, we did it already for you. And we have APIs and dashboards, and different metrics. You don't need to rebuild this uh, process anymore. And you can uh, plot it on the price, compare, and start doing your analysis. What is also super important is social related data, how people are talking about cryptocurrencies. When you observe or when you're in your crypto uh, assets uh, for some time, you will see very interesting things happening. They're super excited and very positive about any single cryptocurrency is very close to the top of the price, and they will be bashing and saying that the people are uh, behave so badly, and so many terrible things have been very close to the bottom price, and they're just saying. So you need to collect the social data, and it can be like Telegram channel, Reddit, Twitter, everywhere. Of course, a uh, very important price, because always compared to the price, and uh, not less important is uh, data like how active are developers, how much is the building, uh, how active is the building, how much is the uh, uh, open source community around. Because any good process is uh, any good process. It's an open source project, and uh, you can measure uh, just by series of developers who are mostly expensive and they have limited uh, time they can stay with any project, how active are they participating in this particular platform. So these four pieces of data, they are important and you should take into account when you make your analysis or decisions. Um, all the data uh, which I just mentioned or show few charts, it is on our platform and for students you don't need to pay anything, you just register, go 
maybe you mentioned we, we saw in Hong Kong each other, and we will give you access for your research, especially for your research. <coughs> and the data is a lot. I know if you, if any of you, I, I didn't ask the question how many of you are more from financial background and how many of you are more from data science and artificial intelligence background, because it's now the two topics. But if you are data scientist, you will be excited. So really, more than 130 now gigabyte, yeah, gigabyte, just text messages. And I don't know how many records of uh, on-chain transactions and traces. It's a really amazing source of data. And they are correlated. They're all of them related. So just save the links. You can uh, later on you know where to go. And um, maybe before I by myself uh, browse around with different set of data, uh, maybe there are some questions, and you will lead me to which uh, part of uh, valuation of cryptosis you, you would have natural interest. Yeah. How do you monitor the developer activity? How is it related? Yeah. Uh, the question was, how do we monitor monitor developer activity? I will show it. I hope it's working now. I don't know what happened. Uh, how can I make it? Huh? Another browser? Is there any other? Is there here like Chrome or something like this? I never used, or oh, I haven't used uh, uh, Microsoft Explorer for 10 years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to work. Okay, here's here's what. Um, developer activity. Um, what we do for developer activity um, at the moment uh, we can only uh, track GitHub. And in GitHub, it's of course, if you simply try to, uh, I don't know, developers will understand, if you try to measure commits, it's a kind of uh, easy, easily gameable uh, uh, metric. So what we do with uh, tracks so called uh, uh, GitHub activities, it is like commit or comment or bug report, and we normalize the metric. So it means if one project is obviously more active, you will get higher uh, numbers. And uh, well, as you will see, that the projects who have high valuation, they mostly have also quite a lot of developer activity. And basically, my uh, always advice when you analyze any project, is this is the first metric to pay attention to. So it's a very good question. Without going too much into details, in the every ratio, it's already esoteric things. Are they building anything? Because if the project is not building anything, well, maybe you don't need to analyze anything. Okay, so there are some projects like Binance, for instance, very deep famous. They also don't have uh, open source activity, yeah. but they are already established. 95% of projects there have to be, uh, at least part of their development, open source. There, will be, there must be some traction of it. I know, I'll take my maker because it's a good project to do. Now, if you... You will see that, yeah, it's a kind of also, they're not working every day the same, but there is quite some substantial level of activity, which is yeah, up to top 40, and uh, sometimes around the year, of course, it's close to zero, but let's say 20 to 40. If you check this data for many projects, you will see that 20 to 30 is a kind of good level of developer activity. Our project was 26, 31, so it's a kind of average medium uh, activity you need to put into a network uh, to be sustainable long periods of time. And yeah, and all the metrics you can see uh, over all historical, historical scan, and uh, typically we ask uh, to stake, uh, uh, to get specific access by developer activity and 
daily active editors how many editors on, on chain interacting with uh, your project uh, it's free of charge you can always see for any project uh, platform so I would say yeah, it's a very good this way you should start as a group you mentioned in the evaluation slide that you use try to volume data for exchanges yes uh, how do you filter out So the question is, uh, when we use the price and volume data from exchanges, how do we uh, remove folders, uh, like uh, wash, wash, wash trading? We do not. We actually utilize this wash trading as a sign. One thing I did not mention, not to make it complicated, sentiment as a platform, we focus on behavior analytics, where we believe the whole market is, can be represented by specific behavior patterns. And one of the patterns is uh, how intensively uh, projects, uh, uh, some projects at least, involved into wash trading. And uh, it does represent, it does represent, uh, um, well, let's say, uh, the whole volume, uh, um, if it's uh, just an example, one billion, there are periods of time 50% uh, will be wash trading. There are periods of time that only 10% and there are periods of time will be 90%. Yeah? And, uh, but by itself, it's uh, surprisingly always related to the price itself. Close to the bottom, you will often see, or we've analyzed it uh, and seen that uh, wash trading is removed. And there is an explanation to it. And, uh, but yeah. Mm. You don't, uh, for, uh, for, understanding, for understanding the circles uh, for the whole crypto market, you don't even need to remove the swash trading. It will, uh, it will not block you for understanding where you are. Okay. Yes. What do you think is the underlying asset of the cryptocurrencies, like crypto what, asset? What I think? What's the underlying asset of it, like of the crypto world? Yeah. So what do you uh, think is it? Utility? Utility. Uh, for, for every uh, single crypto asset as an underlying asset, uh, remember it's a digital asset. Yeah? There is nothing real behind it. Well, in Bitcoin, you, you could claim it's a miners uh, <coughs> equipment or energy which you stuck into it to mine all those tokens. Uh, but long term, it's a utility which is a whole network perceived to be, okay, how can I use? Uh, what, how important for me uh, the token is. But to some degree, you can say, at least for Bitcoin, that uh, it's the energy which you uh, used to mine and to protect uh, uh, the network from being fake. I will give you uh, maybe better, a few other examples which uh, uh, explain uh, my point. Uh, Ethereum, yeah? so Ethereum uh, token, ETH. What does it, it, it is at the moment? Well, 2017, this main utility was to participate in ICO. So you invest uh, 100 ETH into ICO, or you hope you get 500 in one month. <laughs> it's, uh, that was assumption at the time. Now, ICO time is over. So how do you use this Ethereum token? It's used in the following way. One, uh, if you want to have your uh, domain in Ethereum network, so that it's not uh, this long uh, uh, number of uh, uh, characters, but for instance, on hackau.eth. So the main name uh, for Hong Kong University, which whenever someone wants to send you some donations, you just pass the thing. You need to stake some Ethereum tokens, or actually you need to fight with others to get this thing. By the way, if you haven't done it yet, you should. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is a one usage of uh, uh, Ethereum. It's quite a lot of Ethereum uh, uh, spent and hold in this. Uh, Ethereum name for the senior side. Now, another usage. They're supposed to be coming proof of stake on Ethereum, where if you stake some amount, you will get 10% or 7% every year. Another usage uh, or value. If you participate in uh, an Ethereum network, you can also uh, participate in a project on top of it, like one of them, which we are actually looking into, Maker. They have a decentralized lending system. What does it mean? You, you buy some Ethereum, you put it as a law, uh, you put it as a, 
uh, as an asset, and you get real dollars. You, can, you, you put, of course, a lot of, uh, uh, on top of it, like to get one million uh, dollars, you need to put one and a half million of uh, corresponding EPA tokens, but you can get uh, this without going to bank or without signing any papers. You just get in response one, one million in, in digital tokens, but you can transfer it to exchange and you get the real money, or if you have uh, a corresponding bank account. So this is already useful for perceived, uh, perceived, uh, uh, perceived value of uh, Ethereum, how you can use it right now. And, uh, and there are quite a few others, but this is uh, how I personally uh, understand every network. And every network has, uh, has its own usage. Well, the, uh, did you understand the question? Because it's actually a specific question from a person who is from crypto uh, How long will it take uh, before, uh, uh, before we uh, start seeing, if I understand it correctly, before we start seeing for the every network, its own token has its unique usage, is it? Yeah, yeah and, and since you collect all these data, yeah. Obviously, I've thought about okay. Now we cannot compare ether with uh, Bitcoin, but we can only compare it with ah, okay, EOS, okay. Affinity, or so. so. Will, uh, when will become time when it's uh, clear for us? Okay, Ethereum is completely different from Bitcoin. Exactly. They have more in difference than in common. Okay. That's a very good question. Um, to some degree, we're already in this stage. To some degree. For instance, if we look here on our platform, we already start to distinguish. These are decentralized exchanges. Can we like group them together? Because they have nothing to do with Bitcoin. The main purpose is to run decentralized exchanges. There's quite a lot of projects. And uh, it's not here, but uh, yeah, there is a bunch of uh, smart contracts. Yeah, of course, Ethereum, EOS, Bezos, Waze, Neo. I would say that it's already established now the uh, distinguish between the projects, but it's not a final yet. We might need this uh, another circle where, especially for the smart contracts, where we'll see a uh, network which is wide. And when we can see the network, which uh, could not keep up uh, with their promises, and honestly, we don't know which project will not survive. And uh, once this next uh, uh, circle is over, then I believe we'll be much closer to this point of time. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, and Monero, Zcash, or Windows, Windows this, uh, based protocols, this uh, would be. Uh, promise to be Bitcoin by privacy. In some in some circles, actually in crypto space, uh, there are people who claim we're already there. I don't think so, not, not yet. The, yeah. There are still possibility we will, uh, we will do small adjustments to the network. So let's say two more years. Some more questions? 
As well as I can, I can, uh, I can look into some some interesting charts uh, just uh, to show how uh, actually on one side for the eye of human is attractive to look into the data once you package it together. On the other side, how undiscovered uh, all the data is. Yeah? Yeah, first here. You mean for the whole network? This is a very good question. <coughs> How many people here are uh, very positive for Bitcoin cash? Not that I, not that I harm anything. <laughs> and how many people here, by the way, believe that Bitcoin is a real cryptocurrency and uh, the one? Okay. Good. Uh, well, Oh, they have very difficult task. Uh, on one side, is it uh, now? Do you know the story be between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash? Not that I uh, know. No. Okay. So there was a, actually there was the beginning of the one Bitcoin, created by Satoshi Nakamoto. But once they start developing and uh, came through the cycles, they realized that okay. Actually, in order to fulfill the promise to be a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, uh, we need to do something. It's not working. Transactions are very expensive and very slow. So either we, if there was one part of community say, okay, we need to increase the amount of blocks so that we can put many transactions into one block. Or another part say, no, 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 no. Okay, we increase now, but what the next? We, can do, we have to increase again and again. So no, we don't do this. We try to solve it on the ground level. We build the lightning network. We scale the whole network on a different uh, programmatical uh, layer, and we don't touch the core system. On the way I tried, I tried long time, and there was an agreement, and then this agreement didn't fulfill. Like, uh, then we tried to uh, reach consensus. So, okay, okay, we don't increase now, we build lightning network, but we increase later, and then we, at some point of time, uh, this part of community which say, which uh, believed we have to be able to do all transactions between people and every single transaction stored on blockchain, not somewhere secondary layers. They say, okay, we built our own system, and they fork. And this uh, fork is a Bitcoin cash. And this actually is the beauty of cryptocurrency, uh, uh, which uh, many people uh, not realize uh, from outside, and it's very powerful quality of cryptocurrencies, crypto assets. It's open source, and if the team is doing something which is not uh, in the spirit of uh, uh, community or key community stakeholders. There is, they can always uh, like fork and say, okay, now we create our own system. And people believe long time that to fork Bitcoin successfully not possible, but Bitcoin cash uh, proof is possible and it has a very high value. It's number I think four or five now in the project. Now to succeed Bitcoin, it's a very difficult task just because first move advantage, of course, and because the Lightning Network, unfortunately, for Bitcoin Cash is working. So the second layer solution seems to be working. Now they have second layer solution, they have Bitcoin Cash, which is doing the same with the bigger blocks, uh, but they were late. If you uh, ask me personally, I think it will not happen that they will succeed with Bitcoin, if even other wish, because I like uh, that they were so brave. Uh, but uh, as lightning network seems to be working at the moment, unlikely to happen. But I have both before the presentation. Well, why do you ask? This is a beauty and danger of crypto. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone uh, thinks that his network is better than the others. <laughs> no, they're both, they're both. because uh, it's real, uh, very, the closest to the initial vision of Satoshi Nakamoto. All transactions peer to peer on chain. It's the closest. 
but uh, things are changing sometimes. It's more complicated. Yes. Um, yeah, a general question about uh, the sovereign cryptocurrency, right? Um, Which? Sovereign. Because now we, we know that some of the sovereign uh, nations are looking at cryptocurrency. Ebro? Ebro? <laughs> no, like Ch China is working on it and uh, yeah. some other Russia. countries, right? Yeah, so without naming any countries, but even uh, the, it was mentioned in the Singapore FinTech Week where Christine Bengal spoke and she gave a keynote. So she was open to the idea of um, like government, like a uh, central bank. Mm -hmm. So, what is your view on that? If that happens, will this innovation or whatever we went through? Uh, Amazing question. Did you hear the question? Uh, <laughs> cryptocurrency created by government, what does it mean? Yeah. So, kill it or, yeah. um, I think it will eventually might happen in this, but it has no chance. Even Singapore? No way. Right. Even Singapore. Even Singapore was really proved to be very, uh, let's say, reasonable for the sense how uh, government, the humans, uh, uh, structure. Still, um, the uh, the reason uh, why isn't it? it's not because uh, uh, they cannot do it. It's uh, because um, the real power of crypto asset is coming from the total freedom and very competitive field of all network participants. Once you put two strong players regardless if it's government or some corporation like Facebook also knows they want to create, or JP Morgan wants to create, it has no chance because uh, uh, big uh, entity will always tend to uh, take all the value, all the profit, it's a natural process to itself. Now, you cannot compete with a network of 100,000 or 1 million of Three people who are building the value, they will always be stronger than you. Like, uh, and especially because you cannot control them, you cannot take away from them. And uh, over a long time, this network will always lose. Okay. Well, the, the can be, uh, there is a good chance that there will be some conflict. Uh, I don't know what, in which way it will be a conflict. Uh, and it will be very interesting to observe on the point of data or what's happening in the reality. Uh, but uh, uh, it's the same like, uh, you know, in, uh, 250 years ago. Now it's a completely different uh, uh, example, but it will give the point uh, what this crypto is doing to the world. When 250 years ago in America, uh, they built a kind of uh, land of free opportunities, but you have all rights to protect your property, even with the guns. Yeah. Till now, if someone claims your property, you can use your guns because it's yours. Nothing can remove, but at least till now. <laughs> now the crypto is doing, and it's for the physical world. Now the same on the uh, digital or virtual world is what crypto tells you. You have your private key, no one can tell it from you. Who can take away from you. Well, you need to be smart not to like reveal or like, keep someone steal it from you. Uh, but this is a 100% ownership uh, uh, proof for whatever you own. Now in this environment, you are very motivated to be an entrepreneur. Uh, to show you entrepreneurship. Yeah, because you know, oh, oh well, that's interesting. If I uh, smart enough and I can find to cooperate with other people and we build some value, no one can really take it from us, I will do it. And uh, this is the cryptocurrency, how they uh, been created till now and how it will always be in competition to any centrally governed one. Hmm? Okay. It's a long time, so that's very good question. It really depends on what's the KPI for success because yeah. what if Singapore next year says, okay, we created the sovereign Singapore coin and yeah. now you can pay taxes on it. So yeah. a bunch of people go buy, they printed a shit lot of money because now they're gonna sell it yeah. based on miners. So now they have two currencies just because they said they can pay taxes. That's correct, yeah. It's billions created from the bill uh, uh, this is a very good addition. The bill likely be uh, quite some usages for this kind of service. That's true. Utility will be there. I completely agree. Yeah. It makes no sense because it's crazy money. They will do it. Yeah. It's just uh, to have uh, uh, 
crypto coin be Singapore dollar or uh, Pedro or how it's called Visa. Suppose the government uh, will have tendency to print more. There was some questions, uh, I think, from somewhere there. Yeah. Um, as someone who doesn't know much about cryptocurrency, yes. uh, what makes you believe that you can put trust in a virtual type of cryptocurrency, that there's value behind something intangible? You shouldn't trust anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real. Okay. Never trust anyone. Do your own research on everything. And when you do research, first thing see as a building are really the building complicated things is there a really really strong developer community. Developer in the current world is uh, the brightest minds, they know their value, they're very passionate. If they participate in something, well likely they did already some uh, research before you. Because they would never build uh, uh, cryptocurrency for Sorry, to Pedro, Pedro Do. You will not find uh, a very passionate developer there. But if there is a passionate developer community somewhere, they see the value. So you can always say, okay, what is the value? And uh, yeah, so the chef no, never trust anyone, even me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because of uh, this privacy, you can hold ownership. There are enough people who will try to use it to steal something and they can disappear from you, you'll never find them. <laughs> it's very kind of uh, tool side of war. When you build something, yeah, you own the whole thing, but there will be someone else who will try to take it away from you. <coughs> like Wild West, yes. It was very tough time in the beginning. <laughs> you can uh, become fast rich or you can be killed. Sorry. <laughs> Yes. Lies in cryptocurrencies or like blockchain can be used in other use cases? Very good question. Honestly, I don't know. Like, uh, there was a period of time, there was a period of time when I thought uh, blockchain without cryptocurrency, it's like body without a soul. There is a simple explanation uh, why uh, this cryptocurrency always gives incentives for the network participants to fight for it, like to really make sure it's available. Because if they don't see any value, they will just dump it on the market. Uh, they will make sure that uh, it will disappear from the uh, eco, eco uh, space. Now, that was my thinking. Now, lately, I'm not so 100% sure anymore because I see so many uh, projects uh, uh, working on the blockchain space without any cryptocurrencies. And uh, as I'm getting older, I'm not so maximalist anymore. So I say, maybe I don't know something. So in some way, deep in my heart, I think, Blockchain has to need to have a, a cryptocurrency attached because this is a way how you, uh, you know, it's like you have a car. If you don't put the fuel, you have to push your car. It's very heavy. Now, the cryptocurrency are talking like you fill the fuel, and suddenly the whole community makes sure the thing is driving, moving somewhere. They will push you, they will support you, they will do marketing for you, they will do many things together with you because they're interested in this value. So I still believe in with my heart. But because blockchain technology is so amazing and so many uh, government banks are trying to use it, maybe we will wait and see. Maybe they will find a way how to use it. Too. Very good question. Yeah, last question? Okay, last question. Who wants to ask last question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Will Bitcoin price go go all the way up? <coughs> or I, have, we are, have we at the top of the cycle yet? Have we? At the bottom of the cycle yet. Okay, this question is better. Uh, okay, both questions are good, but because I'm here, not in the, and it's film. Sorry. And it's real. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not uh, in a position. Of, I don't have a license for financial advice. Maybe I should be fine. And uh, second question, if we're on the bottom, let's put it this way, we reached the area which historically has been proven undervalued. 
and they're there for around two and a half months already. Uh, if you, well, we can share the, uh, the slides and you can compare the time. Last time it took almost one year to come out of this area. The first time it took only four, four months. How much time will it take now? I don't know. But we are clearly in a territory where I would say, based on historical account, it's underrated. Now, the next is the, first, the first question if you ever reached 20 South, it's too many factors. I don't know if you're aware there are some, or actually, there are always attempts to create better Bitcoin, faster, more secure. Now, there, is, uh, there are a few technologies which are claiming to do it uh, in a very efficient and decentralized and government uh, protected way. If they succeed, okay, Bitcoin will not reach. But the question is, they succeed? It's very difficult. Um, maybe we'll answer your part. <laughs> not in the camera. Oh, well, I have my opinion. Just, uh, just to know that we are in a territory which historically has been proven as underrated, I think it's good enough answer. Good. And then to sum up, actually, uh, it's, uh, well, I'm very, uh, very uh, positively surprised that uh, uh, we did not talk about price uh, so much at all. There was only a few questions, so it's very uh, good. Uh, quality of uh, conversation when we don't talk so much about price. Price is always a, a, a good uh, side effect, uh, and it helps you to analyze things. But uh, um, more important, why crypto, crypto assets are here? Uh, to understand that uh, our human brain is actually very unused to uh, live with such fast changes. So it's good to accept uh, that it's a painful process when you're involved in uh, space. You start believing in something, and then it's changed in one year, very fast. You start believing in other things, and it's changed again. But as a researcher or a future participant, in my belief, it's one of the most ex uh, exciting places to be because we see the emerging of uh, kind of spirit of uh, free entrepreneurship, or like freedom, ownership, which we haven't had in the whole history like in our humanity. So it's good that we touch so many different uh, topics here in the books. Okay. Oh, please, yeah, right. <coughs> yes, there is a piece.
Okay, well, just while I'm getting set up, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Hong Kong University Blockchain Club for hosting us. Um, I'm Serena and I work with Excellent Sentiment. Um, there was a question about the slides. Um, the Blockchain Club will be sure to get those slides out to you, so if anyone was requesting them. Um, yeah, so if you have your mobile devices, please bring out the website, menti.com, M-E-N-T-I. We have a quiz, five quick questions, and t-shirts and swag to give away. Okay, is everyone on this website? Okay, the number that you should be typing in is four five six nine six eight. Okay, is anyone stuck? Can you just show raise your hand? Can you repeat the code? It's four five six nine six eight. <laughs> 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 So right now, Keith is in the lead. Keith. Keith. Uh, so far in first place is Keith. But we've still got more questions.
Okay, so I'm going to reveal the winner. Okay, so H C Y. H C Y. Do we have a wave if you're in the room? Or maybe you're coming to us online. Oh, congratulations. Just in case uh, some of you don't know the right answer. Uh, and, uh, can it be uh, 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 So ju just in case uh, some answers are not too clean, or no, wasn't clear. Um, of course, for one of these four data sources was on chain data. How to move? Ah, it's a bit, it doesn't show. So Problems in the allow to pro broadcast the right answers. email and if you have any comments or suggestions to our events um, please do fill the form and once again if you want to join our online communities please scan the QR code on the screen and if you want to join our mailing list you can come to the stage and uh, leave your contact information here thank you <laughs> Thank you.